Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be discussing one of my favorite personalities in the Pokemon fandom. His name is Tomwaki Imakuni, but he's better known as just Imakuni, which is usually stylized with a question mark at the end of his name. Imakuni has had his hand in several aspects of the Pokemon franchise, from writing some of the music heard in the Pokemon anime, to drawing artwork for several cards, and much more. So, who is Imakuni exactly? Let's talk about it. First, we should clarify that Imakuni is a character portrayed by Tomwaki Imakuni, though it is a character that relies heavily on his own likeness. He's often portrayed in a silver or a black costume, which features Mickey Mouse-like ears. Imakuni was well known for his promotion of the Pokemon trading card game in Japan, especially between the years of 1997 and 2002. And while his appearances and participation in the franchise has declined since, he has remained an iconic figure for the franchise as a whole. During his active years, he was known for evolving with each new generation of the Pokemon games. So, with Gold and Silver, he became Imakuni Neo. Then later on, with Ruby and Sapphire, he became Shiny Imakuni. Beyond this, he also was well known for wandering around Japan in costume and in character. If you recognized him, you were expected to greet him in a particular way. If you didn't, he would pretend to act offended and not speak to you until the proper greeting was given. He'd also participate in league battles around Japan, using strange and very poorly constructed decks, which was one of his many running gags. As mentioned previously, one of Imakuni's biggest contributions to Pokémon has been his musicianship. He's provided enough music in his career to span more than 10 CD releases in Japan. One of his more significant releases was as a member of Suzuki-san, a Pokémon-themed rap trio consisting of Imakuni, Kobayashi, and Raymond. Notably, all three members of Suzuki-san would contribute to the franchise in other capacities, like voice acting work in the anime. Suzuki-san's CD release held other special, special significance as well. If you've seen my video about the Trade Please campaign, then this might not be news to you. But in case you haven't, Suzuki-san's CD was integral to the Trade Please campaign, meaning in order to participate, you would need a flyer that came with the CD. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you're interested in learning more. Imakuni has made appearances in the video games as well, specifically as a special opponent named Strange Life Form Imakuni in the Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy Color and its sequel. If you're interested, you can activate his event in-game by talking to people in the Water Club. After this, he will randomly appear in the various lounge areas of the clubs. You can tell he's nearby, as unusual music will begin to play. When you speak with him, he'll sing music and encourage you to dance. Once this is over, he'll finally challenge you to a game using his own bespoke deck, which consisted mostly of psychic-type Pokémon. What's really interesting is what you can obtain from him after winning the card game. The first three wins in a row, you'll be rewarded with four booster packs. On the fourth consecutive win, you'll get a trainer card bearing his likeness. Beyond all of this, Imakuni has made cameos in the Pokémon manga, but what I like most about Imakuni are his appearances and contributions to the trading card game. Most of his cards are joke cards and not legal for any level of tournament play, but they're usually hilarious in their crude artwork or by the instructions laid out in the card's text. I personally first became aware of Imakuni way back when the gym expansion sets were being released, as I was keen on buying Japanese booster packs at the time, and I pulled a card called Imakuni's Doduo. This card was later reprinted in XY Evolutions as a secret rare, which was also the first time this card was officially released in English. As I close this video out, I'd like to show you somewhat of a comprehensive list of Imakuni-themed cards. I don't know if this is all of them, but these are the ones that I'm aware of. For many Pokémon fans, Imakuni holds a sentimental and a nostalgic spot in our hearts. I certainly miss his bizarre antics, behavior, and his funny cards. 
I can only imagine those who were fortunate enough to grow up in Japan in this era have a much deeper appreciation for him. I hope we haven't seen the end of Imakuni, and I hope we can see something else from him in the future related to the Pokemon franchise. Additionally, I hope you've come away from this video having learned something. If you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I'd also love if you shared this video with somebody else who might appreciate it as well. Enjoy the remaining Imakuni cards as they pass over your screen. Until next time, I'm Cool Trainer Rob, and you've all been cool trainers too.